All right, so here we are in Unity. Let's go ahead and duplicate our rim lighting, move it over. I'm just going to call this one here five underscore multiple lights. We'll call this five A because we're going to have two of these. All right, grab our rim, duplicate these, five underscore multiple lights. I think I spelled that wrong. Yep, multiple light has. That's right, I didn't give it a Kiwi in there. Okay, so five underscore multiple lights. Great. Let's drag that one over and open up this one. Alright, so it's opened up right here. Let's uh, close over those two and rename this five lights. I'm just going to call this one here five A. Okay, so how do we do this? This is actually really, really easy. It's so easy that um, I could do this you know, several times. Okay, so we're going to copy this. This is the pass. We're copying this within the subshader. Just the pass. Copy. Alright, and let's just paste it in here. So right underneath. So we now have two passes. Second one, we are going to change from forward base to forward add. And right underneath that, you're going to type in blend one one, which will tell it how to blend over the last one. If you put blend one one up in here, it will actually start blending over the objects behind it. Can be cool. And um, that's some cool get into when we start talking about image effects. Okay, so that there is sorted. What we need to do now is remove ambient lighting and any textures. We don't have any textures, so we don't need to worry about that. So let's save that, reload it in Unity. You notice nothing has changed. And here's using the wrong one. All right, you can see the shader is now being controlled by two lights, which is really cool. And that is how it works. So that was really fast. Uh, let's go through and explain how that happened again. Within our subshaders, we have a pass. These passes are like render passes. And inside that, we have a tag. So the tag on the first pass always has to be forward base. This one here tells it that it is going to be the base pass that all other lights are blended over. All right, so forward base anyways, it's the base pass. Um, if you have forward add, usually what it does is it will be semi-transparent and we'll be getting into transparency a little bit later on. All right, and in the second pass, so we duplicate the entire pass, we have forward add. And we also type in how it's going to be blended. So right now we have blend one one. Um, we can have something like blend one source color, give it a different effect. As you can see there, a uh, lot softer. You can blend based on alpha, you can blend however you want. Um, you can even do a blend zero one, which you can see will turn off, really pointless. And um, you can do blend one zero, which is going to Da, da, da. Overwrite the other one. Alright, so that's how that works. It just controls the blending. And that is literally it. That's it's so easy to work with and really cool. Alright, so next thing we need to do is see that this is a directional light. If we change this to a point, so it is kind of working, but you can see it's having a bit of trouble trying to track it. So um, generally it's not actually supposed to work, but what we're going to do is talk about point lights. Point lights. Let's have a bit of a look at these. Up until now, our shaders have only been using directional lights. But we really do need compatibility for point lights as well. This is done by taking the W component of the world space light position and then using a conditional statement to have our lighting model work correctly. Let's take a look at the code. There's a little more code to add here. which, As we can see, let's go ahead and break this down. To calculate the point light, we need to get its position relative to, to the object as its rotation, it's always facing the object, and attenuation are based on its distance away. We have float3 vertex the light source, and the distance, and the attenuation. So first we subtract our vertex position from the light position to get its relative rotation based on our object. And then we, by using the length function on the resulting vector, we can get the distance. So there's a bit of uh, math there. If this doesn't quite make sense, uh, this is, as I said at the start of the series, that we might be using a little bit of um, trigonometry, Pythagoras and things like that. What we have here is a classic example of Pythagoras theorem. So if you want to look up how Pythagoras theorem works and you're not very good at math, uh, you can find that on Wikipedia. It's just how two vectors can be added and subtracted together. Um, but yeah, if you don't want to know how it works, then yes, it works like that. Attenuation is going to be the inverse of the distance as it's brighter as it gets closer. So as the distance gets bigger, we want it to get darker. Finally, 
The light direction is the normalized relative rotation. All right. So now we need to toggle between the point and directional light with a conditional statement using the world space light position zero that we discussed earlier. Okay. So uh, we use if and else. I'm sure you're familiar with if and else statements. They're very common in programming. We just want to check that the world space zero is um, world space light position is zero, which means directional light. Otherwise, treat it like a point light. All right. Now, conditional statements are very heavy calculations, and personally, I don't like to use them. So because we'll space light position is only ever going to be 1 or 0, you can actually do it like this using a lip. Um, I'm not going to explain how this works right now. If you really, really want to know, uh, you can jump to the last part in this series. Uh, we will be discussing when we discuss how to optimize our shaders, how to do this to make our shaders a little bit better. Practical for exercise 2. Finally, we can add in some point lights into our shader. Alright, so let's just grab this one. I'm going to turn this light back on. All right, okay, this, and I'm going to call this one here 5B point lights. Let's duplicate these two. Call this one here 5B point lights. 5B point lights. All right, that's great. Let's open this one here up. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to rename this point lights. The second thing we want to do is remove the second light path. Cool. Uh, the reason we, want, we do that is because we don't want to rewrite this again. And let's come down to where we calculate our lighting. All right, so just in here. So what we're going to do is we want to use a if and else statement. All right, so we want to go if our lighting. So it's fine. All right, so if world space light equals zero equals 0, 0.0, else do this. All right, so this one here is going to be for directional lights, which is cool. Cut out that, paste that one in there, paste that one in there. And I'm actually just going to define these up here. All right, we'll define them before the um, conditional statement, just so that it's there for Unity to realize that it is in fact there. And we're going to have in here the attenuation light direction from before. We'll deal with directional lights all this time, but now we need to deal with point lights. So we're going to start out by calculating rotation. So it's going to be float three, and I'm going to call this one here vertex. Actually, because this is in the fragment shader, we can actually go fragment to light source. It's just a name, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it cheeseburger if you want, but wouldn't recommend that because other people might need to read your code. All right, world space, light pos zero dot xyz minus i dot pos world dot xyz. So that will get our distance, or that will get the distance vector. To get our distance, we will actually need to calculate that using a really cool function called length. So distance, length, all right, and in here we want to go fragment to light source. Cool. Now attenuation is going to be one divided by distance, and the light direction is going to be normalize the fragment to light source. Now the reason we don't normalize it up here is because to calculate the length we actually need to we need to have the vector length, and normalizing it will make the length equal one. So we really don't need that. All right, so let's just save that and give that a go. You can see we have a bit of an error here, and I think I already know what it is. Undeclared identify attenuation. There we go. I knew I forgot to do this. We need to make sure we tell the Unity what these are. So it's a float and a float 3. So once again, ignore anything that says GLSL. Um, you ought to come down to something like this. Must evaluate to a scalar, 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 and plus a cast. Okay, so it looks like this is an error that is DirectX 11 specific. I can spot where I went wrong. What I did is we've got world space light pos zero. I forgot to specify the W component. It's the one we want to check. And refresh, and yes, that worked. Brilliant, that was easy. All right, so we have here 5B point lights. We need to make sure that we assign it here. Unity cookie to beginner point lights. All right. And currently, it's not going to work. And the reason for this is that it's not calculating it. So you see that one there kind of is, but we haven't duplicated this shader yet. Let's go ahead and do that now. Grab that path, copy. All right, paste that in there. And we want to go to forward add and make sure we go blend one, one. Cross our fingers and hope this works. There we go. Cool, so this is now working. We can now color this light. All right, so that's great. So you can see we're getting a bit of a bug here over on this light. Um, just because we haven't actually configured that to work with point lights, 
but Unity's um, had a bit of an update and now it decides it wants to. Okay, so that's great. So I'll just leave that one in there, over there, and there we go. All right, I'm happy with that. Just to go through this again to reiterate what's going on, we are checking whether the W component is zero, which will be for a directional light. It's zero for, zero for directional lights and one for point lights. It's also one for a spotlight, which makes that a little tricky. If it's a directional light, we do the same code we've been working with all this time. If it's a spot, uh, point light, however, we need to calculate the distance from the from the fragment to the light source and we do that by subtracting the light source position with the fragment position and you might think that this possible world is actually vertex position which it is but it's actually interpolated between the vertices so that's why it's now a fragment position all right so with that there done uh, we can now go ahead and calculate distance by getting the length of that vector attenuation is going to be one divided by the distance because it's inverse and that way it is brighter as it gets closer rather than darker and then the light direction is just going to be normalized. All right, so remember that the if-else statements are in fact really bad. I wouldn't recommend using them at all. However, it is a much easier way to understand at this stage when we get further on to more advanced techniques and we finish off this beginner series, I'll be talking about how we can use lerps to make this much more optimized. Okay, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for the next lesson when we start getting to some really, really cool stuff about to start to get into texturing and stuff so look forward to that